Hey everyone, and we are back for the episode 5 preview. I have a cold, so my voice may sound a little weird. So the trailer begins with Danny at what seems to be the aftermath of her battle with Jamie, and Danny is asking the captured to bend the knee and join her or die. This is actually fairly standard procedure in both book and show, pledge fealty or be killed. Joffrey, Stannis, Roose Bolton, even Rob participate in this activity. Now they've put a concerned face on Tyrion with some ominous music as if there's something to fear with Danny, and then they follow this up with scenes of Ashes and Varys saying they need to find a way to make her listen, and then Danny on a roaring dragon and Jon looking concerned. Now this makes it look like they're playing with the idea of Danny turning evil, but I highly, highly doubt this. There is a Mad Queen theory floating around the fandom, and this really comes from the last chapter of A Dance with Dragons, where Danny starts getting visions in the Dothraki Sea that tell her that her efforts to rebuild Marine were folly and that she should embrace her warlike side. That said, I simply don't see Danny going into insane conquest mode, at least not permanently. And the reason I don't adhere to the Mad Queen theory mainly has to do with George R. Martin's feminist views. We have to ask ourselves, would George R. R. Martin really make his magnum opus be a story where the two main female characters, Cersei and Danny, are both insane, while the main male characters, Jon and Tyrion, are sane? Absolutely not. That's just not his style. Danny is no Girl Scout, but she's not going to become a full-on villain. The editing of the trailer is desperately trying to make it look like Danny is evil, but we really have no reason to think that she is. After all, if Danny were really out for blood, she would have attacked King's Landing and Cersei would be dead. Since Cersei is alive, we can deduce that Danny still believes in saving lives and is listening to her advisors. It's as simple as that. Plus, the seeds have already been planted for the John Danny romance, and he probably wouldn't have a romance with someone that wants to burn cities to the ground. Kill Ollie's parents? Sure. Burn cities to the ground? Not so much. Now we do have this ashes scene, and we see two human figures in it. I imagine those people are Jamie and Braun. It should be interesting to see how exactly Jamie survived. Even if he gets out of his armor and swims to the surface, Danny and her dragon should be right there. Perhaps he was actually in a river rather than a pond and floated downstream. I also wonder if Danny and Tyrion know Jamie survived. Did they see the rescue or just the fire and have assumed that he was incinerated? Belief that his brother is dead may be contributing to Tyrion's look here. Of course, the cliffhanger with Jaime drowning is a big parallel to Davos at the Blackwater. He mysteriously ended up alive after being nearly killed by wildfire and nearly drowning. There has never really been an explanation on how Davos survived that, so maybe we won't get one for Jaime. Next, we get a scene of Cersei and Kyburn talking. Despite losing the battle against Danny, Cersei did get her gold, which I totally was not expecting, which means she can pay the Iron Bank and immediately take out a new loan and hire the Golden Company. Kyburn has been talking to them, so it seems like this is going to happen. I'm not sure if the company will make it into our story this season, but it seems like the showrunners are setting things up for season 8 at least. I'm still waiting for some little bit on Kyburn's backstory, but I don't know if we'll ever get that. Next we have Bran releasing and then skin changing ravens to get a view on what the Night King and his army are up to. He seems to be heading for Eastwatch. Now some have noted that in the opening title there is now an ice shelf near Eastwatch by the sea. Here's the opening from Season 7, and here's the opening from Season 6. So the question is, could the Night King army simply walk around the wall? I mean, maybe, though I do feel the wall is too large of a Chekhov's gun to leave standing. I could see George R. R. Martin being tricky and subverting expectations by having the others walk around or perhaps beneath the wall through Gorn's way, but I'm not sure the showrunners would be bold enough to leave the wall standing, not when they could have an awesome wall-shattering or wall-melting scene. Now, John has apparently gotten a letter about all of this from Bran. Interestingly, Danny and Varys are sitting in with John as he talks about this. Team Danny seems to be getting more and more on board with the idea of a northern threat. Now, speaking of relations between John and Danny, a lot of people have been wondering whether or not the dragons like John because of his Targaryen blood. We've never really had any confirmation if dragons like people with Targaryen blood. Yes, the dragons like Brown Ben Plum, and they acted a little weird around Quentin Martell. But at the same time, we have cases in history where the dragons ripped apart people with Targaryen blood. I imagine most people want to know if Jon is going to ride a dragon. I tend to think not. Narratively speaking, the entire point of having more than one dragon is so that the dragons can be split up. And that way there can be a dragon on dragon fight. And in our last scene, we have a flyover of the army of the dead. The army seems to be composed of a mix of wildlings, black brothers, and skeleton warriors like the ones that attacked Bran. The crowd actually has more Night's Watchmen than I would expect. 
Only a few hundred Night's Watch were lost in the Great Ranging versus thousands upon thousands of wildlings. Though perhaps it's all just lighting and these wildlings look like they're wearing black cloaks. And that's all for the Episode 5 preview. I'll see you next time with the Episode 4 Q&A. Thanks for watching.